So a few of you have been wondering how to set up Streamer locally for development. And I am going to guide you through this as best as I can. So this is actually, uh, this is a Mac. Um, so the way you go about this on Windows might differ. But in case you're on a Mac, you can just follow along. And in case you're on a Windows machine, then you can just, you know, improvise. <laughs> Use this as a, uh, as a stepping stone. So uh, how I usually start is, if I have a clean system, of course, you have to create some sort of development directory. I mean, that's really the only way to go about it. So if you're in your home directory, which I am right now, you know, you just can just create like a development directory, let's say. Uh, development. Okay, so this one's empty. I'm just creating it for the purpose of this recording. Usually it's called dev for me. Um, and in there, you can just clone the repo. So what you want to do is you want to actually, well, if you want to work on it, as in work on it, you probably want to fork it, to be honest with you guys. So what you want to do is you want to go in GitHub and you want to fork this repository. I'm going to fork it to another account that I am connected with. Let's see. So I'm going to fork it here. Um, so I'm going to let GitHub do its thing. And here we go. And now at this stage, I can actually just clone this. So here, clone and download. And here's the HTTPS uh, URL. Now, I prefer personally the SSH URL because, you know, I have SSH set up and everything. So if you do, uh, you probably want to do this. If you anyway don't plan on committing or, or anything, you might just as well go ahead and just use the HTTPS. But uh, SSH is my preferred way of going to do this. And so what you want to do is you want to do git clone and then this URL. So what's this going to do? Uh, so in my case, it's asking me for my SSH key. That's fine. And um, so what this is going to do, it's actually going to create a directory in here named after the repo. So in this case, it would be streamer. So and in this directory, it copies all the source code. So here we go. We have this directory and we can just, you know, CD into this. And here we go. So this is the source code. If I open this in my uh, explore my finder it looks something like this and there are a few like hidden files you might not see them and that's fine you don't need to really see them the really the important file is this one the build gradle that's the one that contains all the configurations and this is the one that also governs um, the dependencies and, and things like that so this is the one you're going to want to import into your IDE and now let's talk IDE so for IDE purposes you really really want to use IntelliJ uh, IntelliJ idea. Um, the reason for this is that they have great implementation with Grails and Java and 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 really uh, uh, in Gradle and and all these things. Um, they have like an inline uh, editor for for your database. I mean, they're just it's just awesome. So IntelliJ idea is the way to go. There's a 30 day trial if you want to try it out, and then you can get um, then you can get like a, a, a subscription based for a single person it's not so big of a deal and also if you're a student you get it for free i think yeah yeah i got it for free exactly so if you're a student you can get it for free even um so take advantage of that intellij idea is really it's it's, it's a rock solid ide for sure so what you want to do is despite what you might think you don't want to just drag or open this entire folder the, really the easiest way to go about this is just take this build gradle file that's the one you want to take and you want to drag that into intellij idea or on windows I've been told that you have to go and and open and then all that navigation you open and then you actually open this file. Yeah, do not open the actual streamer folder. Um, okay, so once this is started up, what we're gonna see is we're gonna see this dialog right, this one here. Yeah, and this is a Gradle import. Now it's perfect. It recognizes this is a Gradle file and it you know, suggested this Gradle import. It's asking us some basic things like Gradle, JVM, um, on the project format. So now I have here, I'm not using the Gradle home or anything. I'm not using a Gradle, uh, or, or I'm not using a, a lower um, Java environment. So I'm not using 1.7 or 1.6 or anything like that. I'm using 1.8. And, uh, and then, Everything else, auto import, I don't have checked. I mean, I leave everything at default, really. Um, what I really say is important is that you choose this default Gradle wrapper. Because I've had this c case, you know, where people use local Gradle distributions. And that's just 
didn't work out great. So use the default Gradle wrapper and that should work fine. So let's go. Mm, now what it's going to do is it's going to actually open the application. It's going to open the source code um, and it's going to do so, you know, and it's going to index a lot of stuff. It's going to be indexing, indexing. So it's going to take some time potentially more for you than for me because I have already Gradle and everything. So it, it might do some do some things. I'm going to skip this part of the video and come back to you as soon as that's done. So indexing is done and hopefully it didn't take too long for you guys. Uh, and then what's going to go, what's going to happen is that uh, we're actually almost already done. I mean, for me, I'm not sure if it's going to do that for you, but for me up here, it even initialized like the, the running of the application and everything. If it has not, um, then what you want to do is you want to go up here into the stream my task and even this, I mean, this is wrong even. Okay, so it, it recognized even that this is a Grails application for me. Um, but even even that being here, it's actually wrong. Um, so you don't want to run this one. Um, it's actually incorrect. And in my case, I just ignore it. And what you want to do instead is you want to, on the right-hand side, choose Gradle. So this was automatically added because it was a great, uh, it's a Gradle project. And then you want to choose Gradle. And then under Applications, you want to you know, run this boot run one. So uh, Gradle, Tasks, Application, Boot Run. That's the one you want to run. And once you've run that once, it actually gets added up here and is used as a default. So that's really convenient. Um, so let's just run it once. And here we go. So it's doing the boot. So it's running the boot run. Um, now internally, this uses the JDK that I selected in the beginning in that dialogue. If you did not have JDK there, you probably couldn't even you couldn't even import it. But um, so it's important that you made sure that you had some JDK downloaded. So if you didn't, just you know just go ahead and uh, actually you can just Google download JDK. <laughs> And, and then you can see here right there, Java SC Development Kit 8. And then you can just uh, accept there. Um, you want to accept the license and then you can download it for your system. Uh, for my part, it's going really well right now. Uh, it's actually already configuring Spring Security, which is great. Um, and, and here we have the running application. So everything is running perfectly. And here we have the localhost 8080. And we have the we have the application running. Now, if it did not run for any case, so there may be different scenarios where it may not have run. So let's go through the different ones. Scenario number one, you did not have a MySQL database. So when running this, it's actually using the development block of the application YML. So there's a file. So why, how did I open this window? So you can just application YML, you can just find the application YML here. But how did I open this window? I just pressed shift shift, right? So shift shift on the keyboard. And now it hangs, All right? Okay, now shift shift. And then application dot YML. So here we have the application YML. So we don't even have to know where it is, but in case you want to know, it's under Grails up conf application YML. And here's really all the configuration for the application, um, or most of it really. Um, and here it is this development block. So this right here, that is like being used when you run it in this development environment, right? What we're doing right here. And so here it is using the MySQL JDBC driver. The reason why it doesn't use the H2, so the embedded uh, driver, the one that's used for production by default, is really because when debugging and working, you might want to like inspect the database a little more and, and go into it and look around. So that's why actually the, the MySQL JDBC driver makes a lot more sense. So um, you need this database streamer, and in this case, you need a username of root and a password of no password. So if you don't have this set up, uh, and let's just mimic that we don't have it set up. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm actually going to drop this schema completely. And streamer lock. No, it connected. The connection failed. Okay, wait a second. Um, so I'm actually going to use a MySQL minus u root and then connect to my local database and then let's just say drop database streamer. Well, I guess it did work. All right, so the database doesn't exist. So now if I run it, let's, let's run it again. By the way, guys, I run it always in debug because, you know, I'm, I'm a developer. I always 
I know I want to debug my code, but if you if you just do some front end stuff or whatever, you can just you know run the regular boot run. Um, it goes a little quicker than the debug mode. But when when working with the back end, you really always want to use the debug mode. Otherwise, you have to restart in order to debug any line. And in case you know you don't know what I'm talking about, debugging means you uh, you go on a line and actually the, the the whole application stops there and you can look at the you can inspect the data and stuff. So here we have the error that you might have encountered, and which is unable to create create initial connection pool. So this, if you get this error or similar, that is because also it says here unknown database streamer. So it does not know the database streamer. So you just, in my case, right, I'm here in the MySQL console, and I just say um, uh, create database streamer. And I don't really have to do anything else other than this. I just have to create the database, and the application initializes all the data for me and all the tables and all the columns. This is all done by Grails in this application, but I just need um, I need the initial database. It does not create that database. Okay, so now we have that first one out of the way. Um, of course, you need MySQL. If you don't even have MySQL at all, it won't start there as well. Um, and then, but usually this is where you go from here. And just to give you a quick example of what you might wanna edit. Um, so let's go ahead and let's, so here we have it running, um, and let's say what I want to edit is I want to change this button from it saying login to saying something else, okay? Uh, let's say that's what I want to do. So I want to go onto the, let's see, so login auth, so there should be some sort of auth GSP. And if you want to find out more about how this all works and why there are GSPs, and then just look a little bit into the Grails documentation. Um, but let's say here, um, so there's this button and it says login submit translate. Oh, well, it's actually translation. Hmm, so it's maybe not such a good way. Okay, let's say I want to switch it from primary color, which is this blue, to green, right? I want to make it more, I want to make it more successful looking. I want to make it more prominent for a positive action. So there we go. Now it's green. So that's a quick example of something that you might want to do um, in this application. But of course, you can really dig into this and, and program um, your heart's desire to your heart's desire. But finally, uh, something to consider. Another problem that you might run into is uh, that the Java version isn't correct. Um, so what you might encounter is something like this, where you go where you open this project structure up here, that's these uh, with the dots here, and that down here you have problems, you have some problems listed here. And these problems, they're usually not really self-explanatory. And I welcome any issues that you might have on the subject, and I can add to this you know, tutorial line any issues that might come up. Um, but the most common one is probably that this project SDK is just not set correctly. So you just wanna make sure to set the project to 1.8 um, so not 1.7, but 1.8 something something, whatever 1.8 you might have. Um, so this is important. And um, and really, you don't need Grails or a local Grails version installed for this. Um, it, it is completely, it's completely enough, I think, at least, <laughs> because I have it installed, I'm not sure, but I think it's enough to just have the, uh, the Java JDK reference here and then do let Gradle do its thing. So, um, okay, well, that's it for this video. Um, I hope it helped you guys. And if you have any more questions, uh, let me know in the comments or let me know on the issues of the GitHub projects. All right, bye-bye.